So this is a continuation of 1.2 justification, 1.22. Even if society recognized soft war, is it safe to assume they would adopt it before it's too late? The Manhattan Project is the biggest fool thing we have ever done. The bomb will never go off, and I speak as an expert in explosives. Admiral William Leahy, Chief Military Advisor to President Truman, 1945. <clears throat> Expanding upon this thought experiment even further, let's assume that one, soft war fighting is possible, that two, future wars could be partially fought using some kind of soft war protocol, and three, U.S. National Defense Fellows have successfully identified a key enabling technology for this type of war fighting and are actively working to raise awareness about it to the point of dedicated more than a year of research to developing a theory about software to inform the public. Is it reasonable to believe that society would accept it and adopt it soon enough? Perhaps some people would. But how long would it take for enough people to reach consensus that this technology has vital national strategic significance and should be adopted and mastered, even stockpiled, as soon as possible? He has that as a question, but many of these questions should be just statements, but here we go. Would society reach consensus before their adversaries reached consensus? Would they adopt and master this new strategically vital power projection technology before their adversaries adopted and mastered it? As has always been the case with the emergence of new strategic vital power projection technologies, timing is everything. This thought experiment highlights a national strategic security dilemma. If a new technology does not have vital national strategic security implications, this would imply that barriers slowing society down from reaching consensus about the strategic importance of that technology would represent a national strategic security hazard. Like all examples of game-changing power projecting technologies to emerge in the past, success depends upon speed of adoption. Thus, anything that degrades speed of adoption would also degrade security. It's not sufficient for society to eventually recognize the vital strategic importance of vital new power projection technology. They must come to consensus about it, adopt it, and master it before their adversaries do. They must not wait around and let their competitors teach them how strategically important this new technology is. As one of many famous examples, the people of Constantinople had less than a year to reach consensus that cannons were of vital strategic importance, which must be, which must be adopted despite their cost. This was apparently not enough time, so the people of Constantinople allowed Sultan Mehmed II to teach them how important this new technology was the hard way, by example. During the early 1900s, the U.S. government had a few decades to reach consensus that airplanes, nuclear energy, and rocketry would have game-changing security applications, and it worked out well for them, but not without some hiccups along the way. As, as those precious few decades ticked along, there were many barriers, e.g. court-martialing General Mitchell or bad advice from people like Admiral Leahy, which slowed down public consensus. In the 1930s, Albert Einstein concluded that nuclear energy likely wouldn't be obtainable in his lifetime. A few years later, Einstein pleaded with the U.S. government to take the national strategic security implications of atomic energy more seriously. By 1939, the situation became so severe that Einstein, a world-famous pacifist, urged U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt to race to develop atomic warheads before Germany. Many forget that Einstein's famous letter to Roosevelt doubled as a mea culpa 
letter after he famously discredited the potential for nuclear energy and famously advocated against war. The barriers which slowed the American public from reaching consensus about strategic implications of these emerging technologies had the potential to seriously jeopardize U.S. national strategic security. Consider how many people would not have been killed or, or how much time, effort, and resources would not have been wasted if military leaders and civil policymakers had accepted Billy Mitchell's idea sooner and postured the U.S. to be a leader in aerial warfight in, in the mid-1930s. Consider what would have happened if Germany, the first to develop jet aircraft and ballistic missiles, had also developed atomic warheads first, months before the U.S. did. The point is the U.S. dodged several strategic bullets throughout the 20th century. Is it reasonable to assume the U.S. will keep successfully dodging bullets when the next strategically vital power projection technologies emerge throughout the 21st century? One point two point three four national strategic security hazards. Protect your heads with shields in combat and battle. Keep your right hand armed with the sword. Extend it in front of you at all times. Your helmets, breastplates, and suits of armor are fully sufficient together with your other weapons and will prove very efficient in battle. Our enemies have none and use no such weapons. You are protected inside these walls. Purported final speech of Emperor Constantine the 11th during the 1453 canon siege of Constantinople. These thought experiments are designed to beg a question. What barriers slow the adoption of emergent power projection technologies that have vital strategic security importance? The reason why this question is so important to beg is because every answer to it represents a national strategic security hazard. So what specifically are the barriers that slow adoption? The author proposes four answers. Lack of general knowledge about the profession of warfighting, pacifism, analytical bias, and cognitive dissonance. One thing slowing society from adopting emerging power projecting technologies is a lack is a general lack of knowledge about the profession of warfighting. Some people simply don't have enough experience or understanding with the basics of physical security to make the connection and encourage rapid adoption. This makes sense considering how less than 2% of people actively participate in this profession. Warfare is a niche field of expertise that almost everyone in society outsources to people like the author. Another barrier is passive pacifism. Some people are perfectly capable of understanding the potential strategic implication of a new technology, but they have a hard time accepting it because of moral, ethical, or ideological objections. Pacifism slowed the development of both air forces and space forces and was essentially, especially pre prevalent amongst civil scientists during the first decade of nuclear warhead development. At one point, President Truman called Oppenheimer a crybaby scientist and forbid him from visiting the White House because of how much Oppenheimer struggled to emotionally reconcile the development and use of nuclear warheads based on moral, ethical, and ideological objections. Air flight, space flight, and nuclear energy weren't technological milestones that many in society wanted to preserve for strictly peace for strictly peaceful purposes these people were perfectly aware of the fact that air flight space flight and nuclear energy technologies could be used for physical power projection and warfare warfare <clears throat> they just objected to it based on ideological reasons and discredited the people who talked about using it for security purposes as being warmongers.
Outspoken pacifists like Einstein famously overcame these objections and eventually encouraged the development of nuclear warheads, recognizing the simple fact that nobody has the option of outlawing their adversaries from utilizing these technologies against them. Whether it's due to lack of knowledge about warfighting or pacifism, the core challenge associated with getting the public to quickly adopt strategically vital power projection technologies appears to be a byproduct of self-domestication. Like any other kind of animal, humans are vulnerable to becoming too docile and domesticated. This can cause them to misunderstand the importance of emerging power projection technologies. This may sound impolite, but it's a legitimate assertion backed by no shortage of scientific evidence and written testimony that will be discussed throughout this thesis. Docility and self-domestication are reoccurring security problems that are pertinent to subject matter concerning national strategic security and any emergent physical power projection tactic, technique, or technology. It's possible for human populations to spend too much time separated from nature to understand their own nature. In their comfort, complacency, or perhaps even hubris, they forget how strategically important it is to remain at the top of the power projection curve. So of course, they will struggle to understand how new power projection technology functions and why it's so important for them to adopt as soon as possible. To adopt it as soon as possible. Some have argued that expecting a domestic society to see the functionality of emergent power projection technology, i.e. weapons technology, is like expecting a golden retriever to understand the functionality of a wolf collar. This concept illustrated in figure three, in their domesticated state, golden retrievers don't know what they are and where they come from. So naturally they aren't going to understand what happens when they encounter the natural undomesticated versions of themselves. Retrievers don't know what their aversion to physical conflict. Retrievers don't know that their aversion to physical conflict makes them extraordinarily vulnerable and a ripe target of opportunity for predators. So they aren't going to understand how their wolf collar technology works and why it's so important for them to use it in the presence of wolves. There are other scenarios where people were people slow ad slows adoption where peoples should be slow adoption even when uh, there are scenarios where people slow adoption even when they have plenty of knowledge about war fighting and no ideological objections to it these are usually people who are perfectly capable of understanding the potential strategic security implications of new technologies but they nevertheless still forfeit technology technological leads to their adversaries. These scenarios illustrate a third and fourth barrier slowing society from adopting strategically vital new power projection technologies. A third barrier preventing society from adopting strategically vital new power projection technology is analytical bias. Sometimes people aren't aware how biased their analysis of a given technology is because they don't recognize their assumption that the first intended use case of a given technology is the most important or that even or even the most relevant use case. For example, when alchemists first started to theorize about the medicinal risks and benefits of black powder, they were inadvertently biased because they only analyzed the first intended use case. They weren't aware of the assumptions they were making, namely the assumption that black powder was strictly a form of medicine that couldn't be useful for several other applications. Why did alchemists make so many assumptions about black powder? Perhaps it was just because they intended to build medicine, so they named it medicine and only evaluated it as medicine. This created a barrier to national adoption of black powder that existed for as long as nobody thought to use a different theoretical framework to analyze black powder as something other than medicine. While this is somewhat of an oversimplification of the issue, it illustrates the point that the same phenomenon could also be a barrier slowing down U.S. adoption of what could become critical proof of work cybersecurity technologies like Bitcoin. 
we need to recognize the assumption we're making that the most important or even the most relevant use case of Bitcoin is its first popular use case, internet money. There is no shortage of examples of emergent technologies where it's not reasonable to assume that the first intended use case will be the technology's primary use case. A fourth barrier is cognitive dissonance. Sometimes people can see the essentially important Sorry. Sometimes people can see the existentially important national security, strategic security implications of emerging technologies, but they struggle to accept and reconcile what they see because it contradicts their preconceptions. Faulty preconceptions can be caused by phenomena already discussed, like a lack of warfighting expertise, ideological objections, or analytical bias, but they can also happen due to fear, shock, or even pride. In plain terms, change is scary, and it's easier on the emotions to ignore or discredit the threat because we don't like the way it feels to be threatened, especially if we become too accustomed to being the top dog. Esteemed gunnery specialists of the British Royal Navy bitterly opposed adoption of the Whitehead's self-propelled torpedoes because of how hard it was for them to reconcile how effective this technology would be at subverting and countervailing the combined strength of their navy, the world's most powerful military force at the time. Oh, I thought there was another part. It's hard to dedicate one's career to the mastery of one form of war fighting only for it to become obsolete by the emergence of a new power projection technology. As history ha has shown time and time again, all it takes is one engineer to subvert the authority of an entire military institution and undermine its combined expertise. As Edwin Gray notes about Whitehead, this relatively unknown English engineer exerted more influence over the tactics of naval warfare and the design and development of warships than all the world's top admirals and naval architects put together. Cognitive dissonance due to fear, shock, or pride could also explain why the U.S. rejected General Mitchell's theories about how vulnerable U.S. naval warships would be against aerial bombardment. General Mitchell famously led a demonstration where a captured German warship was sunken by an airplane launch torpedo to demonstrate how easy it would be for adversaries to employ the same power projection tactics, techniques, and techno technologies against U.S. battleships. Nevertheless, officials rejected his assertions about the emerging strategic importance importance of air power and continued to invest heavily in the development of battleships throughout the 1930s. Probably some kickbacks and people making money going on then too. Always follow the money. Accepting the national strategic implications of disruptive new power projection technologies and then pivoting to adopt it as soon as possible is naturally going to be hard in systems that have been intentionally designed not to change quickly. This challenge is compounded by the complexities of novel technologies with a steep learning curve. I'm with, let me start again. Accepting the national strategic implications of disruptive new power projection technologies and then pivoting to adopt it as soon as possible is naturally going to be hard in systems that have been intentionally designed not to change quickly. Like a pipeline. This challenge is compounded by the complexities of novel technologies with a steep learning curve. But other times, such as in the case of the emergence of the Whitehead torpedo, lack of adoption could be attributed to hubris, cognitive dissonance, or sunken cost fallacies. We've already built this. Generally speaking, being able to recognize the strength and disruptive potential of new power projection technologies requires one to be able to recognize 
one's own weaknesses and vulnerabilities to those technologies. For this reason, accepting the emergence of disruptive new power projection technology requires a population to accept the fact that existing defense systems, which they probably paid a lot of money for, aren't going to make them as dominant as they thought they would. Called it. Investing substantially in kinetic warfighting technologies may not provide as much security as expected and could lead to a substantial amount of sunken cost if other nations learn how to utilize non-kinetic or soft warfighting technologies via cyberspace that can bypass kinetic strength. If this type of situation were to happen, it would be the fiduciary responsibility of those responsible for sinking so much money into increasingly irrelevant kinetic warfighting technologies to accept these sunken costs and maneuver accordingly. Cut bait. Fold the hand. You're beat. Let's go. Okay. Moreover, shock and even denial are common responses to the sudden existential dread faced by a person or population when they realize they are losing a vitally important technology lead to their adversaries because of assumptions they didn't realize they were making. Assumptions like expecting the next war to look like the last war or expecting digital age war fighting technologies to look the same as non-digital age war fighting technologies. It is hard to reconcile the idea that one's baked in responsibility that one's baked in assumptions about the future of warfare could irrevocably harm one's country. But this is the responsibility of all leaders, especially military officers. Empires rise and fall based on the baked in assumptions guiding the decisions of those entrusted with the responsibility of national security. And warfare is a path dependent phenomenon that is highly unforgiving to people who make miscalculations because they don't take the time to seriously question these assumptions. The point is that no empire is safe from technological disruption. It's strategically essential for populations not to allow fear, shock, hubris, complacency, or sunken cost fallacies slow their adoption of important new power projection technologies when they emerge. Speed of adoption has always been critical. This is especially true when factoring in how severe and highly path dependent the consequences can be if vital new power projection technologies aren't adopted quickly. Military leaders especially must hold none of their expertise in existing power projection tactics, techniques, and technologies too sacred because winning strategies can change as quickly and as often as the technological environment changes. And there's no doubt that our technological environment is changing rapidly in the digital age, perhaps more rapidly than in any other time in the history of human warfighting.